Local breaking news. The Stonewall Jackson Monument in Richmond has come down. It comes just hours after Mayor LeVar Stoney ordered the immediate removal of city-owned Confederate monuments along Monument Avenue. Live coverage on this historic breaking news is on the way. But as you can see from that video, very active weather day. A lot of rain came down when that was happening. As we look at the radar, let's bring in meteorologist Megan Wise to give us an update on what's happening right now. Megan? Hey, Anthony. Yeah, we're still dealing with strong storms, none of which are severe, at least at this point. So that's good news. But we do have a couple of flash flood warnings. This is from the severe warm storms that did roll through just about an hour or so ago. Did dump about an inch to two and a half inches of rain through a good portion of the city of Richmond back towards the western part of in Henrico County, the northern part of Chesterfield County. So we do have flash flood warnings until 8 o'clock this evening in this area. And then we have another flash flood warning that includes the east end and a good portion of Chesterfield County as well until 745. So basically the next couple of hours, just use plenty of caution if you are out driving around could run into some ponding on the road. So remember not to drive through that. You will see additional rain moving into the area. We've got some light rain in around the city, and then we are seeing some heavier rain and even some lightning up towards the west end. Short Pump, Laurel, Glen Allen, Wyndham seeing a good bit of some rain, and this is also up towards the western side of Hanover County. So we're still seeing strong storms north of town that's sagging towards the southeast. That'll make its way towards the east end. Strongest storm right now is southeast of town. This has made its way out of Prince George County, Surrey, Sussex, County right now seeing the heaviest rain, a ton of lightning, and this will make its way down towards southeastern Virginia. We'll talk more about this evening coming up here in just a little bit. Anthony. Thank you so much, Megan. And as those storms continue to move through, you can definitely track them as they go through your neighborhood with the First Alert Weather app. Just open your app store and search NBC 12 weather. <laughs> In the driving rain, history is made in Richmond. Crews removed the Stonewall Jackson statue on Monument Avenue. 100 years gone in less than 100 seconds. You've been watching the historic moment unfold live for the past three hours. Richmond reporter Henry Graff has been at the scene all afternoon long. And Henry, you were there the moment the statue came down. Yeah, Carla and Anthony, I mean, the crowd just erupted here uh, in, in excitement as as that statue came down. It was about 440 when that happened. Out of the way right now, just so you can see kind of where we stand. Uh, the statue remains where it was brought off of the pedestal right now as crews continue to secure it. Uh, the idea being that there's a flatbed truck here as well that they will use uh, eventually to remove the statue uh, from the area here. Uh, this statue has been standing for quite some time. Uh, but during a, a meeting with city council earlier today, uh, there was talk about trying to quickly do this or quickly not do this uh, and maybe follow the general assembly process now that uh, localities are allowed to remove these things uh, through a process if they want to. Um, and then the mayor just going outside of that saying that he has the authority because we are now under a extended uh, state of emergency here in the city uh, that he has the power to do what he did here today. And as you can see, no one stopped him. Henry, just looking at this video and the people behind you, it looks like, of course, the crowd has thinned out, but it's amazing how many people actually stayed through the rain. Can you estimate exactly how many people you think stayed through all of that rain after that big storm came through? You know, Carla, we had hundreds of people, if not close to a thousand or maybe even a little over a thousand. When we got to our perch here, I was better able to actually see the whole crowd because before we were just kind of in the middle of the crowd and it was a sea of people all here. And yeah, as you said, even as the storm clouds were rolling in, as the rain came down on everybody in full earnest, folks stayed here. They had been here for hours uh, since about one o'clock when the activity really got uh, going uh, down here. They've been standing out here and they wanted to see that moment happen. Now, the moment that happened, most people cleared out of here. There's just a few people here left uh, over at this point in time. But yeah, uh, people braved the rain to watch that very historic moment happen here in downtown. Richmond. And history, uh, history, when we talk about history, it's not going to come cheap. Henry, can you give us an idea of how much money it's going to take potentially to get uh, these city controlled Confederate monuments to be taken down? You know, that's a good question. Uh, we uh, didn't have any numbers uh, before today, uh, aside from uh, a private fundraising group that thought it needed about $2 million. But today, uh, Mayor LeVar Stoney said during that virtual city council meeting that they will need about $1.8 million overall for this removal process. The hope, though, in the end, is so that money doesn't come directly out of the Department of Public Works budget, that that uh, 
private fundraising that is ongoing right now that, that will help supplement, offset those costs so the city can use that $1.8 million on other initiatives here in Richmond. All right. Thanks so much, Henry, for your updates all afternoon long. And of course, our coverage does not stop here. We will follow developments throughout the newscast and bring you any updates. Our team coverage, of course, continues at 6. Well, right now, more than half of the country is dealing with a dramatic increase in COVID-19 infections. Numbers that many fear will climb even higher with people gathering for the 4th of July. Coastal communities are closing beaches, while other states are freezing or rolling back reopening plans. The safety measures adding to the economic strain. Jay Gray is in Dallas tonight with more. With a wave of COVID-19 infections surging, beaches and bars, summertime staples are in many areas locked down right now. We are very concerned about clusters of people congregating in areas that are going to obviously be fertile ground for the spread of the virus. Another key measure to slow the spread, wearing a mask. Frankly and honestly, I do not believe that we have any other choice. But there is a choice. The governor of Georgia touring the state, urging everyone to wear a mask without signing an order mandating the protection. There's no national policy either, despite a recommendation from the CDC and an urgent plea from the Surgeon General. Please, please wear a face covering when you go out in public. Face masks and closures aren't the only concern for tens of thousands out of work. There's the rent, there's the utilities, there's renter's insurance, there's car insurance, there's cell phone. Bills mounting with the new month bringing even more economic stress for some. The income tax extension deadline, an end to the federal housing eviction freeze, and the final $600 extra unemployment payment as Congress debates issuing a second stimulus check. I have to just, you know, use it until it runs out, and then hopefully by the time it runs out, I'll be working again. A hope shared by so many right now. Now, there's also some new hope when it comes to a potential vaccine. Pfizer announcing today that they have had significant and positive data from an early test involving 45 patients, and that if they can get regulatory approval for this new drug after more extensive testing, they believe they can have 100 million doses ready by the end of this year. On your side in Dallas, Jay Gray, NBC 12. All right, Jay, thank you so much. Well, Washington, D.C. was once considered a hot spot. Now coronavirus cases there are starting to level off just a bit. But Mar Mariel Bowser is still concerned ahead of the July 4th holiday, and that could be a major setback for that region. region, region. A big show of more than 1,000 fireworks is planned on the National Mall, which could draw large crowds. It's set to begin just after 9 Saturday night, and it will be visible from the district and northern Virginia. President Donald Trump will make a speech from the South Lawn of the White House. Two flyovers will also take place. And you don't have to head to D.C. if you want to get a nice show of some fireworks. NBC 12 has your front row seat to the Macy's Fireworks Spectacular atop the Empire State Building in New York. That starts Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Face masks protect us and others from catching the coronavirus. But they've also become the subject of an increasing debate. How effective are they? We're on your side tonight with the answers coming up next. Megan? Outside your window this afternoon, Goochland, you're still seeing a little bit of some rain. Rain cooled air, though. Temperatures in the 70s. That's for everyone who's seen some rain. We'll talk more about our evening forecast coming up here after the break. Stay tuned for that and later a high speed police chase comes to a dramatic end when a car plunges off of a cliff and into the Pacific Ocean. How this all started when we come back. And you are taking another live look at Monument Avenue. You can see the Stonewall Jackson Monument no longer on its pedestal. It is on the ground. It came down this afternoon just moments after the mayor ordered the immediate removal of city owned Confederate monuments along Monument Avenue. So stay with us. Our live coverage on this historic breaking news continues. The Department of the Treasury's Unclaimed Funds Division is on your site virtually right now. You may have money sitting somewhere and you don't even realize it. Don't worry, though. These volunteers are here to help you with the process. Just pick up the phone and call 1-833-302-0704 to learn more right now. Lines are open until 730. Well, it's been more than a month since Virginia's mask mandate took effect. 
Health officials agree face masks can slow the spread of coronavirus, but those small face coverings are the subject of increased debate, not just to wear them or not, which we know is a big time discussion, but does it really work? Here's Rachel DePompa with more. Tonight, the battle over masks is raging nationwide. In city council meetings, you literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask. In stores, I have a breathing problem. My doctor would not let me wear a mask. Even the halls of Congress. Unfortunately, this simple life-saving practice has become part of the political debate. I am very concerned. Speaking to Senators Tuesday, Dr. Anthony Fauci making the startling prediction the U.S. could soon have 100,000 new COVID cases a day unless Americans take precautions. There's no doubt that wearing masks protects you and gets you to be protected. So it's people protecting each other. Please, please. Wear a face covering when you go out in public. A new study shedding light on just how effective certain masks can be. Researchers at Florida Atlantic University used a laser to measure how far droplets go with different coverings and found a well-fitting homemade mask stitched with two layers of fabric kept particles to just a couple inches away. A bandana was the least effective, allowing those same droplets to travel more than three feet away. The scientists say without any mask, particles from coughs and sneezes fly more than eight feet. Out on the streets of Miami Beach, where masks are now mandatory, most people say they're on board. If it saves lives, I, I definitely am for it. I don't want to not wear my mask, go around my parents, and then I take the virus around them. People thinking of others, a positive sign in the midst of a still stormy debate. On your side, Rachel DePompa, NBC 12 News. All right, Rachel, thanks. And there appears to be a heavy economic toll to not wearing a mask as well. Investment bank Goldman Sachs crunched the numbers and found that a national mask mandate would be more effective than lockdowns and would likely save the U.S. gross domestic product about 5% a year. One place where you will see face masks, airports. And just in time for the 4th of July holiday weekend, American Airlines announced it will start filling flights to full capacity again. Now, this comes despite a rise in COVID-19 cases. United and Spirit already started booking full flights last week. Now, of course, there will be increased sanitation and all travelers have to cover their faces and take a health questionnaire. If customers refuse to wear the mask, we will limit their travel. American will notify passengers and allow them to move to less crowded flights when available. Once on board, passengers will be allowed to move to a different seat within their ticketed cabin if seating is available. Accurate, reliable, breaking weather specialists. This is NBC 12 First Alert Weather. Watching uh, scattered storms this afternoon on First Alert Doppler radar. Not seeing any uh, severe thunderstorm warnings around here in Central Virginia. Strongest storms making their way south into far southern Virginia. A couple of severe storms that are closer to Virginia Beach in and around the city where we've seen heavy rain, upwards of one to two and a half inches of rain. Right now, just seeing some light rain, but some heavier rain just off towards the northwest, making its way through the western parts of Hanover County, up towards Wyndham, short pump, seeing a good bit of rain, but not quite as much as we've seen within the last 10 to 20 or so minutes. But the rain that we have seen with the bigger storm that rolled on through about an hour or so ago has prompted the uh, flash flood warning. It goes until 8 this evening. So if you are driving out and about anywhere around the city, out towards the west end, northern Chesterfield County, just make sure you're using plenty of caution. Also, a flash flood warning south of that one. So there's two areas, includes the east end and a good portion of the eastern side of Chesterfield County. We had one to three inches of rainfall with the storm that rolled through again earlier this evening. So just remember, turn around, don't drown, don't drive through any road that has some ponding on it. And this is what's left of the storms that did produce all of that heavy rain and lightning we had earlier this afternoon. They've now made their way down towards Surrey County into Southampton County. A lot of heavy rain and lightning still making its way towards the southeast and seeing a few scattered storms down towards far southern Virginia, southern Dinwiddie County. In Greensville County, right near Purdy and Emporia, seeing some heavy rain, also some lightning, and then making your way into Mecklenburg County, right around South Hill and Southern Brunswick County, seeing some heavy rain and lightning in this area. Not a whole lot going on north of town this afternoon. Louisa County right now, you're seeing just a couple of showers moving into the western side of your county. Then we do have a couple of showers trying to develop here into Caroline County. 
did have a lot of showers and storms earlier this afternoon in the northern neck. But right now, you're looking at a quiet picture, and you can certainly see where we've had the rain. It's a lot cooler in those areas. Mid-70s from West Point to Tappahannock, upper 60s in Richmond, but seeing a little bit in the way of some brightening skies. Don't be surprised to see temperatures warming up a bit as we go throughout the next hour. Low 70s right now in Petersburg. We're at 86 out towards Farmville currently, and we will continue to see a few more storms as we go through the evening hours. We're at 8, 9 o'clock, and we're still seeing a few of these popping up on the radar through the evening tonight. So some heavy rain within these storms can't be ruled out. We'll continue to watch them as we go through the evening. Temperature wise, we're in the mid 70s about 9 o'clock. If you do find yourself out and about, just make sure you take along the NBC 12 weather app. You can certainly track the radar there. Upper 60s to start the day tomorrow, and it's a much quieter day tomorrow. We'll see some sunshine. Mix of some clouds, temperature-wise, low 80s by noon. We're in the upper 80s tomorrow afternoon. Little on the humid side, so just plan for that. But overall, quiet Thursday, quiet Friday, and just a small shower or storm chance for the 4th of July. So if you do find yourself outdoors, a lot of us look to stay dry, and we have a few showers and storms, it looks like, to end the weekend. Temperatures, though, hot. We'll be in the low 90s both Saturday and Sunday. Yo, that's a car right there. Wow, you heard right. That's a car off the side of a California cliff and then ends up in the water right there. This all started yesterday afternoon when authorities in Santa Cruz were called to reports of a shooting. The suspect carjacked the vehicle from the scene and then went on a wild 100 miles per hour chase ending when the car went into the ocean. You can see the man in some of this video. He's going to get out of the car and is then caught in the surf. Officers approach with their guns drawn. The suspect then makes his way to the rocks where he is quickly taken into custody. Wow. Well, just ahead tonight, the grandma and high school secretary breaking the Internet with her TikTok talents. Look up. Well, before the commercial break, I said look up. Well, now here's the rest of the sentence. <laughs> It's a bird, it's a plane. No, it is snakes. If they didn't scare you on the ground, well, they could potentially scare you in the sky. Paradise tree snakes can fly, sort of. So they glide through the air, and researchers at Virginia Tech have figured out how they discovered the motion used to slither on the ground is the same used while gliding, which allows them to fly even farther. It's not clear how they take off. Now, you won't see these come flying at you in your backyard. They actually live in South Asia, and they are pretty harmless. Mm. All right. So they say, exactly. Well, TikTok has become all the rave, and a Newport Newswoman has spent her time during the pandemic becoming an international TikTok sensation. Oh, my God. You better kill it. Oh, Tammy. Tammy Ordery is a high school guidance secretary, but she's always dreamed of becoming an entertainer. And it's safe to say this grandma's dream is now coming true. And I think people are taking off on it because they see me as an older white woman. You know, and I got some weight on me, and I'm not the skinny girl, no sexy outfit out there dancing. I'm just me being me. And that's what we love. She currently has more than 120,000 followers and has received millions of views from all over the world. Go, Tammy. <laughs> Let's go back to that breaking news now. Of course, you are looking at basically the ending of a historic day there on Monument Avenue. The statue of Stonewall Jackson is now off the pedestal. You can see it looks like it's being loaded onto the truck where it will soon go into storage. Again, this has been a historic moment. Thousands of people were out there to witness it this afternoon. We'll have much more on that team coverage coming up live at 6. And quick reminder here this evening, the Department of the Treasury's Unclaimed Funds Division is on your side virtually right now. You may have some money sitting somewhere and you don't even realize it. Don't worry, these volunteers are here to help you with this entire process to get your money back. Just go ahead and pick up the phone and call 1-833-302-0704. The phone lines are open until 7.30.